Hi guys, my name is Christine and I'm a dating, relationship and personal development coach. Today I'm talking about when you do no contact with your ex, this happens. So what is that thing? What is the thing that happens when you start doing no contact with your ex? Now I think what happens generally is time then starts to reveal how this person, this ex of yours actually feels about you. Because if they love you, if they care about you, they will come back into your life. And if they don't, then you'll probably never hear from them ever again, right? Obviously, it depends on your personal life uh, circumstance. Like if you have kids together um, and uh, obviously you may need to talk to them in those kinds of situations, they're not just going to disappear from your life if you have something like that with them. What's important though then is that even though time will reveal how this person feels about you, you should not be waiting by the phone to see what happens. You should not be crossing off the days um, because I know there's some dating coaches out there that say to you, you know, it takes this amount of days. This is the optimal time it is for an ex to reach out to you. But because people are very individual, it's very difficult to know when an ex will reach out to you if they still love you and care about you, right? Because ultimately no contact will only work on a woman or a man, an ex that um, still loves and cares about you. It will only ever work on those people, right? An ex that doesn't love you, that is relieved that the breakup has happened and they're happy with their choice to leave you, you'll just never hear from that person ever again, okay? So crossing off the days, you know, going to your calendar and, you know, crossing off the days until, let's say, like three months has gone by or six months, you know, is not going to help you. It's just going to keep you stuck. It's going to keep you stuck in place. And you don't want to be stuck when it comes to this sort of thing. Because if you are stuck, then it's preventing you from moving on. And uh, you don't wanna be in, a, in that kind of situation where you're being prevented from moving on because you're crossing off the days for when no contact is gonna end um, on, the ex on, on the expected date that they're gonna come back. If you found a date that uh, perhaps they may come back on. Or a dating coach has given you um, a, a specific date when that kind of person would come back, right? An ex would come back after no contact. But you don't want to be taking any of that too seriously. Um, you shouldn't be crossing off the days. You shouldn't be waiting by your phone, hoping they're going to contact you, waiting for the optimal moment when they're going to contact you, because that is just going to keep you stuck and it's going to prevent you from moving on. So when someone breaks up with you, you should start the moving on process, right? So that means um, removing any emotional triggers, perhaps, um, Obviously it takes time, so I'm not saying that you're going to forget about your ex instantly after a breakup because that's ridiculous. We're all human beings after all. You're not a robot. You can't just switch off your emotions. Um, so these sorts of things does take time, but you need to help yourself as soon as possible. And that is by removing any reminders, any things that can, um, you know, make you feel like you're going backwards, basically. Um, you may need to remove them off social media, um, remove any photos that may be on your phone, um, remove any and all reminders, basically, whatever, you know, whenever possible. Okay, and then just remind yourself that you're going to need to have time, um, you need time when you've gone for a breakup to get over it and to heal, okay? So being um, not too hard on yourself either, because sometimes it can seem like people can move from relationships really fast that's why sometimes you may see on social media you know some people going from one relationship straight into another and it looks like the, the the whole thing was seamless and they just didn't care at all now there may be cases where that person didn't care but most of the time people do care when they've had a breakup um even if they were the one that did the dumping there's still some sort of like feeling there i'm um, not necessarily i want to get back with that person kind of feeling but it kind of shakes up your world when you um remove yourself from someone's life you know especially if you're together for a long time like the untangling of mutual friends um you if especially if you did like almost everything together so when that thing kind of stops you know this person your ex or whatever may be living a new life now and it's going to be very different very strange for them just like how it is for you okay so um, you know, it does take time even for that person, even if they, it seems like they've moved on really quickly. Okay, it does take time. It really does. So don't be hard on yourself if you have a bad day, right? If you have a bad day where you feel really sad, you feel really grumpy, you miss them, especially if you didn't want the breakup to happen and you feel sad about it, right? It's okay to feel sad about 
um, someone dumping you and someone breaking up with you when you didn't want the breakup to happen, right? You love them, you care about them, you have feelings for them. So of course you're gonna feel sad, right? So don't feel like you need to switch off your emotions and to become bitter or angry or, or even, you know, really mopey and, and sad, right? You're gonna have days where you feel probably all of, maybe all of those emotions in, in the space of an hour, right? But you've got to be able to understand that you're a human being and it's okay for you to feel those things, okay? But it doesn't mean that you should um, wallow in them. Like if you feel that way, um, try to, you know, catch yourself out of it. Try to get yourself out of it. Try and, you know, go out and do something, right? You know, there's a quote that I love by Dale Carnegie and it goes like this. Inaction breeds doubt and fear. Action breeds confidence and courage. If you want to conquer fear, do not sit at home and think about it. Go out and get busy. Right. So being at home, being idle, not doing anything, just feeling sad, feeling sorry for yourself, you know, lying in bed, not doing anything, you know, it's not going to help. Right. So if you feel like you've had it, you know, it's obviously there are going to be some days where you feel like doing that. But try and catch yourself, you know, if, if you've been in bed for a couple of hours and you realise, oh God, no, I shouldn't be just sitting here doing nothing, it's just going to make me feel worse about myself. You know, go out, get busy, do something, go and exercise, go take a run, go to the local swimming pool and have a swim, go to the gym, um, or, you know, take action on some of your goals or something like that, because that'll make you feel better about yourself and make you feel productive, right? So it's always good to feel like you're being productive um, and progressing towards a life that you want for yourself. Um, that's one of the best ways I feel like you can get over someone is by having new things that you're trying to work towards, trying to figure out where you would like to be in, let's say, like five years or 10 years, and then start taking action every day to, pro you know, to make progress. Because if you feel like you're making progress in your life to a goal, then you start to feel better about yourself and more confident about yourself. It doesn't even matter if you reach it or not, right? All that matters is that you're doing something that's productive and that's going to help you and help your future, Okay, so one of the, the main things then that will also help is working on your confidence and your self-esteem issues. And I feel like taking action, doing stuff, not just sitting at home doing nothing will be one of the best things that you can do to help with that. Okay, because, um, you know, when you get dumped, when you've gone for a breakup, it hurts and it does knock your self-esteem. It does make you feel bad about yourself. Like, oh, what's wrong with me? Is it because I'm ugly? Is it because, you know, um, I did this or that? You know, and there may be, if, you know, been some things that you did in that relationship that perhaps you need to work on. Perhaps, you know, you need to like look back on the relationship and think, okay, what were the things that maybe I did to contribute to this breakup, right? Because there must have been a couple of things, right? Not everybody is... Um, getting away scot-free, you know, with, you know, the the conclusion of the breakup, right? There's probably some things that you did do that you probably could have done better, that you could have addressed better. So perhaps one of the things was like your communication problems. Maybe you didn't communicate very well with your partner. In that case, I highly recommend a book called, um, it's a very, very famous, popular book. I'm sure, I'm sure you've heard of it. And that is uh, women, um, I think it's men are from Mars and women are from Venus. And that shows you the differences between communication with men and women. So if you get that book, right, then you'll be able to see perhaps how you may have contributed via your communication to the breakup. Obviously, it depends on how long you were together. That book is more for people that were in long-term relationships. So relationships that lasted probably like more than a year. Um, and they're really good for people that are in marriages to learn how to understand the opposite sex and how the other opposite sex communicates, right? So it's, I think it's uh, really good wisdom and I highly recommend that you go and check out that book if you feel like that was one of the issues that you had when it came to communicating with the opposite sex, you didn't understand them and uh, perhaps um, maybe they felt neglected by the fact that you didn't understand them and didn't try to understand them or something like that. Like I'm not trying to assume what you've gone through, but one of the main reasons couples do break up is because they feel like neither one of them understands each other. So if you get a book like Men Are From Mars and Women Are From Venus, that will help fill in your knowledge gap right? And it's a book that I recommend that you read a couple of times, not just once, go over it and over it again, you know, and keep on going back to it, because it will help you um, cement those ideas into your psyche, into your consciousness, so then it'll become instinctual, okay? So 
those um that's my advice basically on you know no contact and one of the things that will happen when you're not when no contact starts and how your ex will respond to it you know if, if your ex loves you essentially he still cares about you they will get in touch eventually time will reveal how your ex feels about you but don't wait by the phone don't cross off the days do not wait start moving on with your life and try to make some progress in your life so you can start feeling better about yourself so you can deal with those self-esteem issues and confidence issues okay so thank you so much for watching if you'd like to get in touch with me personally then please go to www.christineloveridge.com thank you so much for watching and i shall talk to you again very soon goodbye